the cabinet is going to need a little bit of work. Uh, handle's gone. I got to find one of the knobs there on top that's missing. Got to find something to replace that. Implosion seal's not too bad. It is scratched, but that should clean up pretty nicely without doing a whole lot to it. We do have some some rust down in the bottom. We'll clean that out and sand that and spray a little paint there to stop that. And some rust here. We're probably going to have to sand the cabinet and repaint it. Looks like a pretty easy color to match. It's kind of brown, just I would call a light brown. So hopefully we can find some paint that will match that. And here's the back cover. It's really in pretty good shape. Uh, this, this lettering is painted on, so I'm going to try not to repaint this because I would have to tape it off or stop when I get down to the writing. It would be better if I could just get it cleaned up really well and let it go with that. But we'll see. I'm going to look at these knobs and explain how they work. Uh, this is just channel selector, fine tuning. It's the correct length that goes down through the top of the cabinet. Now these two knobs are the contrast and the volume. Now this set's kind of strange in the way it's designed. The, the on off switch is also the brightness control. It's just this one control switch and control. And that, that turns the set on and off, but it also controls the brightness. So that's a knob in itself. And then the other two, this is contrast and this is volume over here. And I have the contrast and volume knobs. That's these knobs here. And the way they work, they've got a sleeve that attaches to between the knob and the control. See there's a shaft in the knob, metal shaft, but there's a sleeve that attaches between those two points and the sleeves are all disintegrated and missing because they were made of plastic and they've broken apart and they're, they're gone. So I'm going to come up with some kind of a sleeve to go from here to there because the cabinet's here at the top. And same thing on the volume con control. But I'm going to need one more knob. And that being for the on-off brightness. And I'm hoping I can find something that looks similar to this. And again, I'll have to come up with a sleeve of some sort to go between it and the on-off brightness control. And that control, I don't know if you can tell there, Here's the height of the contrast, and you can see the on-off brightness is lower. So it's going to take a little longer sleeve to reach to it. The well, first step is to try to find a knob that looks close to those. And then we'll tackle the, the sleeve part and see what we can come up with there. You would think in all these knobs that I would have something that would be close to the to what I need. But I don't know. We're gonna look through them here and see. I think I found a knob that'll work for the on off and brightness control. Uh, it's gonna be two pieces. I'll just bore that center out bigger in that knob where this will go down through it. And it actually matches the others pretty well. It's got the kind of a gold color to it. So I think that'll work. Get this center board out in this one, and I'll show you what it looks like when I after I do that. Alright, here's a knob. I bored the center out of that inner knob and just put a little dab of super glue. So now we've got Looks like a one complete knob there. But I've also found a solution for those sleeves that have disintegrated. New old stock controls. I've got probably 20 of these so new ones in a box. 
And when I opened them up to see about a sleeve, uh, a shaft to go into this knob, look what else was in here. There's some sleeves which will attach to the controls down on the circuit board. So I've got plenty of those. I just need three. And that'll solve that problem too. Well, here's the three sleeves attached to the controls. Should work fine. I uh, just need to come up with a shaft for that on off brightness control. But that'll work. Which explaining the extensions there on the three controls, I thought, well, why not put a couple on these two controls here on the back? This is a horizontal hold and this is the AGC control. Before you had to take a screwdriver to adjust them, so now they'll be easy to adjust from the back of the set. And the shaft that I'm going to put in the on-off brightness knob will be right here. This is just a end off of an alignment tool. I've got all kinds of alignment tools, so I sacrificed this one to make this shaft. And I'll, I'll just put it in the center of this knob. Just bore a hole slightly smaller than that and then I can force it in there put a little dab of super glue around it and then those extensions that I found will slide right onto that and on down to the control on the board there's a shaft put in so we have our knobs ready decided just to leave the patina on that knob kind of matches the channel selector. It's worn on the edges too. So there's our knobs. My strategy on the cabinet is just a pretty light sanding with an electric sander. Of course I'll tape up the tag, original tag that's on the bottom. And I'm taking some reference photos for the controls because I have some new decals that I'll be putting on those so that way I'll know kind of how how they were centered and the positioning of them so I can put them back in the, close to the same position try to uh, one thing that will be hard to sand is these louvers back here for ventilation uh, you can see there's quite a bit of rust in between them so we're going to have to sand them just by hand by doing each one individually so that's going to take a time, little while to do that but the rest of it's just there's some more louvers here that'll have to be sanded but the rest of it would be just an electric sander getting it ready for the new paint the top's really not rusted it still looks good so so we'll get started well, after sanding with some 220 and then some 500, we're about ready to put some paint on. Still got to tape up that label. Don't want to forget that. But the paint I'm going to be using is paint and primer combined. So the bare metal won't hurt a thing. I've done this before. And that paint has primer in it, so it'll stick just fine. Turn the furnace up a little bit to get a little warmer in here. It's about 30 outside today. And we're about 60 in here now, but I'll, I'll add a few degrees to that and get it as warm as I can, and that way the paint will, paint will do better. Here's a cabinet with a fresh paint on it. That's two coats of the paint primer, Rust-Oleum 2X. Shines very good. Turned out well. 
put the knobs on the top of the cabinet here just to see what it would look like. And pretty happy with those. I think they'll be fine. And this morning I'm going to put some these decals on. These are just a universal deep TV decals that they'll, they'll work on most any kind of set. The water slide, you just put them in water and slide them off. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but uh, the cabinet is marked. This is on off brightness, contrast, volume, and of course the channel selector. It says tuning here. It's all it says, so. Let's see what we can come up with for that. And there's a little indent right there. So I may just take a Sharpie and put a little black dot there or something. And this implosion shield. I thought about just leaving it alone, but it's got some pretty good scratches in it. So I'll probably sand and buff that, make it look better too. This shield is going to be kind of a challenge to sand and buff. It doesn't really come out of the housing. And I think it's actually either glued in or has some kind of a tape with adhesive on it that holds it against the housing. So I'm not going to try to prize that off end up breaking it. I'll just tape up the housing around the edge of the shield and wet sand it and buff it. That way the tape will keep me from getting onto the bezel itself. pretty well. I didn't get real aggressive with this. Uh, these plastic implosion shields, based on my experience, you have to really be careful. You go too much and you'll burn into them. If you get too much pressure on them, you make burn spots in them. But I think that'll work. Looks a lot better. And while I'm at it, I'm going to touch up the Sylvania letters. I did just take some paint with a brush and make them look a little better. And we'll repaint these two little handle retainers. Just lightly sanded them, cleaned them off real good. So fresh coat of gold paint will make them look better too. Fresh gold paint on the two handle retainers. And I touched up the Sylvania letters. Although I haven't come up with a handle to mount on the top of the TV as of yet, I can go ahead and mount the front bezel with the implosion shield, put it back on. I can put the picture tube and the chassis and everything back in. A fellow on one of the vintage TV forums did send me a picture of what the handle looks like. And I really appreciated that. So that's on hold for right now until I can come up with something on it.
Okay, you got the picture tube back in the cabinet. The chassis is mounted back in it. So it's about all we can do till we figure out something on the top handle. But just wanted to show you I was amazed at the picture quality on this picture tube. This is a tube that I had to rejuvenate. It had a G1 short. And so far it's worked every time. And bright picture. Even more brightness if you want it. Well, here's a handle I came up with to put on the TV. It's actually a handle for a guitar amplifier. And it has these fasteners on each end that I'll just take off because what I'm proposing to use is a loop of chain and the loop of chain will fasten on each side of this little retainer. You just spread the chain and then that will that'll hold it in there. Well that color looks a pretty close so now I just need to find me some be chain loops to put on each side. Well, after a bit of work on some old rings I had down the shop on a light, I was able to had to cut these rings off because they were too long, and then rebend them in a circle. So that gives us a pretty pretty nice looking handle. All right, have the upper cabinet back on, all the knobs are on, and one last thing I'm going to do, the knob on this on off brightness control, see it kind of wobbles around, the reason being it's there's a large opening there that had a, a knob that fit tighter in there. So what I've come up with, what was left of this old knob that I had, and that's a good, good size spacer, and I'm going to put it inside of this knob that I made. Put a little dab of super glue once I snap it in there, and there's our sleeve in the middle. Now I'm going to put the knob down in there. The knob's tight. Finally, I'll put the back on and, and I'll, we'll turn the set back on and I'll show you the completed set. Jam porch. I'm not quite sure at this point. Look here, lady. When was the last time you saw Jimmy West last night? This set was a pretty good challenge not only repairing the chassis but that cabinet was in pretty bad shape and I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out here's the back put on everything all buttoned down didn't do any painting or anything on the back did do some cleaning on it and made it look better So I hope you've enjoyed the videos and see you next time. you've enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel thanks